Good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday, June the 2nd. This is my favorite month of the year. This is one of my favorite evenings of the week. We are live on Facebook. Oh, we have to shut that down. <laughs> I always forget that. My apologies. Um, we are live on Facebook. I am Manisha King with the King's Press LLC presenting to you tonight our fabulous Celebrating Black Literacy our narratives matter. So we have another amazing episode for you this evening. So we hope that you will get relaxed. We hope that you will be ready. Um, we hope that you are tuning in. And also we hope that you will invite some others. So now is that time, ladies and gentlemen, children, um, if you would share the video with your friends, let them know that Celebrating Black Literacy is on and we want you here with us. We want you engaging with the authors. We want you, um, you know, supporting them. So what is Celebrating Black Literacy? Celebrating Black, excuse me, Black Literacy, sometimes I get tongue tied with that, is um, an online platform where we feature the most amazing Black authors in not only the U.S., but all over the the world where they are able to share with you their work, their amazing stories, they are able to promote their books, and they are able to um, speak positivity and current and encouraging messages to you. So we're all about, you know, uplifting Black voices where, yes, our narratives matter and we are our, 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 our excuse me, our authentic, <laughs> I'm having a difficult time, we are our authentic Sales. We don't have to, you know, dilute our narratives. We don't have to, you know, wash out the, um, you know, our history. We actually can, um, excuse me, let you know exactly who we are, where we are, where we come from, all that good stuff. So as I said, go ahead and share the video, um, share with some groups, invite your friends, invite your family. Um, well, who is King's Press Publishing? So King's Press Publishing is a family owned publishing house in Charlotte, North Carolina, founded by my husband, Ron King. And it is a, all owned and operated by the entire King household. So myself, our three sons, and this um, is a platform for the unsung heroes, the voiceless and the invisible. So people would think. However, um, we are changing lives. We are making a difference on a daily basis. Um, we are very committed to the community and, um, you know, just promoting authors in the most profound ways. So if you are interested in publishing, maybe you're a writer, maybe you don't know where to start. Um, maybe you've had some interest or you have a story to tell. Maybe you need a ghostwriter. You can check us out at King's Press Publishing at www.kingspresspublishing.com. And you can follow us on social media at the King's Press LLC. That's on Facebook and Instagram. My personal page, which is streaming tonight or where I'm streaming from is my Nisha King. So um, without further ado, I really want to bring these amazing authors on to you. They have been waiting patiently in the waiting room and are ready to go. So let's bring them in so they can introduce themselves. Let's get ready. I hope you're sharing. Hope you're excited. We are live, ladies, on Facebook. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, who's excited to be here tonight? Excited. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get right into it. Uh, why don't we go ahead and introduce yourselves to our audience? Yes. Hello. My name is Kashima Pendu Malik. I'm better known as just Pendu. It's easier to say. I'm originally from New York City and um, been on the West Coast first for about 18 years. And I newly uh, arrived in Atlanta in uh, September of 2020. So I am like a mixture of East and West Coast. I don't know which one to claim anymore. <laughs> um, I'm primarily a performing artist, choreographer, educator, instructor. And through all of my dance career, literally it took me around the world. And in my travels, I said, let me write about it. And that started me as an author. So I'm newly an author as of, um, I got published in December of 2020. So this new land of author land is a new land for me and I've been loving it because I pretty much write about 
my experiences because within my performing artists, I'm also an aerialist. I've gotten to be an aerialist on ships. I've gotten to do pole dance. I've gotten to teach pole dance. I've gotten to act. And now I just feel like, wow, I get to create so much. And so all of those things um, brought me to being an author. And I love that at least this land, I don't need to, uh, there is no expiration date. <laughs> I know and being a performer, you know, there is an expiration date. I still currently perform. I'm just a little bit more selective. I'm not as a go-getter and do every job known to man like I was when I was in my 20s. But now I, I do what I do, but I tend to do it a little more selectively and I write about it. And um, why Black literacy is so important to me is oh my gosh I'm trying to pick one um basically as as us as a people just knowing that we are so brilliant and so smart we need to let others know that no we're not what the media portrays us or we're not what the masses may say we are so intelligent and so I just feel like it's important for us to show that and to show it more and be a little cocky about it you know it's really important to we are amazing and so that's what I like to instill in my youth, I teach a lot of children, and so I like to instill that, that just because we're in here dancing, we always do a little writing as well to let them know that that's first. You need to be, we need to feed this first before we're going to feed anything else. I love that. I love that. Be cocky about it. All yeah. right. Excellent, people. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lorraine Decord, and I am a mother and a wife grandmother. I live in the Pacific Northwest. I've been here for about 18 years, but I'm originally from Washington, D.C. And so I also am a child of both coasts at this point. Um, but I've now made my home here and I love it here. It's beautiful. The weather is wonderful here just north of Seattle. And um, it's beautiful with the mountains in the, in the viewpoint where they, wherever you're looking, you can see mountains. And I'm not used to that coming from Washington, D.C., where the only mountain is 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 uh, hills that you see out out on uh, the Baltimore Washington Parkway, but um, I have been writing for most of my life. I started writing when I was a teenager, and I write mostly to express the feelings that I have inside that uh, don't come very well to spoken words sometimes. I also have traveled. I've gone to Moscow and Turkey and uh, the Netherlands, and I've been to many states in the, in the United States. But um, I prefer this coast, this uh, this area versus any of the other. I wasn't too much of a fan of the Midwest, but I only spent time there driving across from east to west. But um, it's still beautiful. Our country is very beautiful, and we have a lot of different uh areas and beauty some more beautiful than others black literacy is important because when you uh present yourself in the world there's a certain assumption that people sometimes make when they see your skin and they assume that before your mouth even opens there's going to be a certain level of things that they expect to come out so it's important that we as a people uh realize that how we present ourselves is whether it's unfair or unfair is more uh, historical than than factual. Mm -hmm. So we need to be sure that we are presenting ourselves in our best light. And coming from an area, I lived in the Upper Northwest, and we had uh, one library in the area, and it was only open a couple of hours every day, a couple of hours twice a week, and that's just not enough time. And because the city didn't give it as importance as it needed to, then it's very difficult for you to become literate as a black black child in the in the inner city but when there's something is important you will you'll find a way so i think that um encouraging the black youth coming up to think about more literary things than than financial things is better mm -hmm. and uh, i think it's important that as authors that we get out here and present that message i love that everything you said i really um appreciate um the mission or the um the message behind you know what you said why it's so important um for us to be able to present ourselves in that positive light and i think um kashima said something similar that you know oftentimes what people are seeing um you know we're depicted in a negative way so thank you all for sharing that last but not least 
And hey, Casey, for thank you for tuning in, and Jacqueline and Miss Jones. What's going on? I am Shatoria Christian, or as my friends call me, Tori. Um, I am, so I'm actually originally from Georgia, um, Greensboro, Georgia, born in Atlanta, raised in Greensboro, Georgia, and I'm actually in DC as I speak. Um, I am active duty military. I am a wife. I'm a mother of a active duty military also. And then I have a six year old businesswoman. Um, me and my husband, we are, we're parents, we, we're godparents, you know, we, we got a lot of titles going on right here. But um, yeah, so I am now currently here in DC and I'm going to be in Texas here in six months. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I, I am very, I, I enjoy what I do. I love writing. Um, right now I am the podcast creator and host of I Am Shatoria. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a place of I am. You, you get to learn who you are with two simple words of I am. So I started I Am Shatoria to give that affirmation and that love. And that flows into why I think black literacy is, you know, is important because this is my first time ever writing at all, um, ever. And so this book has allowed me to be a voice. And that's why to me, black literacy is so important. It's a, it's a voice. It allows us to speak our truth, speak our identity, speak who we are, speak about what hurts us. Cause a lot of things, it just goes unsaid. So I find it to be very important to allow us to express ourselves with writing poems, pictures, and allows people to come inside of our own stories and to relate to other people. And I think that's very important within the black community. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here with your sister. What is it, Jocelyn? Says my big <laughs> kiss, she's shouting you out. Casey says she's so proud of y'all. Miss Jones says, welcome to the, um, the awesome authors. Also very inspiring. Love your stories and motivation. Keep up the good work. So as we're talking about this good work and these fabulous books, let's go ahead. We're, we are waiting to hear about your book. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Okay. Well, again, like I said, I got published in December, my birthday, actually, December 17th of 2020. Oh. And um, I haven't given you the title yet because I want to rewind that my book was written literally I don't want to say because of, but the quarantine happened and it kind of pushed me to, all right, I guess it's time to do some other things since I can't do my shows and stuff like that. So um, in 2013, I'm just rewinding. You're going to go, it'll all make sense in a minute. In 2013, I, after dancing for Cirque du Soleil, that, you know, the circus world is kind of small. Then there was a connection made of a South African circus in Cape Town and they sent for me. And so in 2013, I lived in South Africa in Cape Town for three months. While I was there, like I said before, I always take notes. And so now fast forward during the quarantine, I was looking over all of my notes and I had so many pages I wrote. I was like, oh my God, I have a book. And then I don't know what friends said. They're like, why don't you write a book? And so I did. So um, this company called Traveling Black Woman, they're the ones who published it, the publishing company. Um, they also looked at my Instagram and it all kind of came together. So it's called South Africa, A Quick Guide to Cape Town and, and Joburg. And um, it's just, it's not just a traveling guide. It's actually giving you my personal story as a, at the moment I was solo back then, but I was solo and yeah, I was by myself, but I mean, I was still with people, but I'm not in a hotel. I'm living with the locals. I'm taking the little cabs that they take. Like I'm living as a local there, teaching at this circus and choreographing and then having, I'm doing also social, uh, they call it social dance work where I'm going to teach into the villages to kids that were like terminally ill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going on these quick, crazy journey, hiking up high mountains and, taking all these boat trips, almost drowning. Basically, I go into detail about the adventures and how it's, you know, the good and the bad. I don't want to just say it's just, it's amazing. It was amazing. But I give you detail about my personal journey. And I think it's important because there's women from America that think, oh, I don't know. Do they like us over here? You know, do they like us? Are they going to be mean to you? Is it dangerous? So I give the real, real because I feel like that's important because if you just go to a hotel and stay the Four Seasons, I feel like that experience, in my opinion, is kind of similar no matter where you go. So I'm just giving the raw 
the good, the bad, the ugly, the everything about the trip. But I'm also giving you like, oh, you should go here. Maybe you should try to do here. So it's kind of a guide, but it's also like the adventures and the craziness and the fun and the, and it's through the eyes of a, let's say if you're a solo black woman, well, let's say if you're like, oh, if I'm married, can I read this book? Of course you can. But I'm just giving you how it would be if you're by yourself. And it was actually pretty safe. Some people think that, oh my God, it's the most dangerous thing you could ever do. And it actually, it was okay. Just be smart, you know? I dressed down. I didn't carry anything flashy. Like there's some of the basic things you do as a traveler that it was actually safer than when I was living in New York City. So mm -hmm. the book is really going into detail. Some people tell me that, oh, you're so crazy. I am a lot of energy and I try to write in that tone. So it's a quick guide. It's only a hundred, not even, I think it's 80 pages. I'm forgetting my own book, but it's a quick guide. And it's like I said, it's a fun guide. You get to see about where you should go in Cape Town or Joburg, but then I'm telling you my stories, which could make you laugh. It could make you go, oh, this girl is crazy. But I feel like it's a fun guide giving you about South Africa and, um, I would go back. So if you have, if you weren't asking me in conclusion, would you do it again? I would absolutely do it all over again. That's fabulous. And I, I just, I, I just love the experience that you had because, um, so, so when you started dancing, um, how did you get into like, um, you know, doing the circus? Oh, that's um, the funniest so I started out, anybody who knows Alvin Ailey and Dance Theater Harlem, I started out like that, like just okay. very traditional dancer, blah, blah, blah. And then of course my body, well, you can't see here, but anyway, I'm not built like a ballerina. I'm built like a black woman. <laughs> you know, we have hips and curves and things. And so I ventured more into modern jazz and things. And so I do work in LA and then I auditioned for Cirque du Soleil. And I didn't get it the first time. I didn't get it the second time. I got it the third time. And I'm with them as a dancer. But because I have a little muscle, they're like, okay, we're going to put you in this aerial act. And you're like, wait, I don't do that. They're like, we'll train. So basically, I start getting trained. And next thing you know, I'm doing aerial work. When I left that show, I'm on a ship and I'm an aerialist. So basically, that's where, you know, people that know people that know people is how the connection happened. And so now this South African circus, they're like, oh, you can dance and do aerial. We would like you to come. So it's wow. a lot of like the world as we all know, networking. So yeah. but it's funny that I never thought in my life that I would be hanging from the ceiling. I always <laughs> thought I would just be on the floor dancing, but things just happen. And you know what's inspiring? I'll never forget this. It was during when I was at Cirque du Soleil and I was flying up into the garage. It'll make sense if you ever saw a show. Maybe you did, I'm not sure. But a little girl was black and said, mommy, look, she's black. And that to me, I, I get goosebumps still to this day because wow. it's important for little girls to see that. And I said, wow, yes. changing someone's life, just me doing this. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy now of being pushed and it was hard, but wow. I do I that moment made me feel like, wow. So I don't even know if other little girls know they can do this. Yes. So that's another reason why I write. So I can let little girls know you can do anything, literally. Yes. That's amazing. I love it. I love your story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to go ahead to the next author, um, Miss Lorraine. Tell us about your book. Okay. My book is Notes on the Train. And I wrote the book. Actually, I just got published in May, but I wrote the book 25 years ago. And it took me this long to get to that point. Um, I had the book. I had all of my materials, my poems, my stories on hard disk and on paper, but through moving from one place to the other and life changing and things happening, I lost the paperwork, but I thought, well, I still have the disk, so I have no problem. Little did I know that disks are very uh, tr intransitive things. <laughs> so then I went to play, open my disk and, and get a copy of it, and it was completely wiped out. So now I've lost my life's work and I'm very upset about it. And I would tell people who would talk to me and they say, you have such a unique way of talking. You, sh you know, you should really write. And I was like, well, actually I did write, but I lost everything. And then I tell the story about how I lost it. And they were like, well, you, there must be something you can do. I'm like, no, I tried everything to get this disc opening, but it was just not, not happening. And um, I finally went to uh, a group and I was telling, telling my therapist that, you know, I had written and I had lost everything. And she's like, well, this doesn't, it exists anywhere. And I was like, it exists nowhere in the world except the Library of Congress. 
And she said, well, maybe you can get a copy of it. And I said, hmm, maybe I could get a copy of it. So last year when the pandemic hit, no one's doing anything. I'm, I'm stuck in along with everybody else. And so I write to the Library of Congress and I said, I would like to get a copy of my deposit. And they said, well, we have your deposit, but we are closed for the pandemic. So as soon as we can get somebody to go down and photocopy, we'll give it to you. Eight months later, here comes this envelope in the mailbox and it's all my writing. So now I have it all. And I was like, oh my God, I was so glad that I thought to, to send it to the Library of Congress. And this, at the time when I did it, I thought, who do you think you are sending what you have to the Library of Congress? Like you're just a little old black woman living over here in Maryland, they don't care about you. But because I had that foresight to do it, my work was saved. And so I was, I got everything. I um, got it proofed, got it um, put together, edited and everything and submitted it and got a book. And that, that's how the, my book was 25 years to the making. And so I was very happy and very excited. And, and um, yeah, <laughs> so I wrote the book. Um, the name of the title is Notes on the Train. And the reason I gave it that title is when I was in therapy at the time, I was not able to speak the words and feelings that I was having in my heart and in my mind, but would think of things after I left. And I'm thinking, well, wow, I should have said this and I should have said that. So then um, I would write it down what I was feeling in poem form and come back the next week and say, well, this is what I was trying to express. And it got to the point, this, this went on for like two years time. And um, so I always did this writing when I was riding on the subway. So notes on the train actually is notes on the train. So <laughs> that's how I came about with the title and the content of the book, just living my life and going through uh, therapy, fighting with depression and feelings of insecurity and, and you know, being as a new mother and a, later a grandmother and a wife several times over and feeling that there was something inside that I needed to get out. So that's, that's what brought my journey as an author to full circle. Wow, that is amazing. I, I, I'm so touched by that. There's so many things that you said that just, you know, uh, resonated with me. Um, I want to let you know that your friend Linda Curitan, um, she's watching. She says, my twin and very first friend author. So she's celebrating you tonight. Um, Jocelyn does says, being a Black uh, dancer is not easy. And uh, Linda says, hi, Lorreen. Darlene's watching. Hi, Lorreen. Uh, Mary Lewis is such a cool story. Um, and Daddy Carl is watching. And wow, that's amazing. All of this is to you, um, Miss Lorreen. And it is really um, amazing what you said. One of the things that you said early on when you said you wrote or you sent your um, writings to the Library of Congress and you asked yourself, who am I, you know, this, you know, who am I to send this off or to think that much of myself that they would want this or whatever. And I just find myself like, who are you not? You know, yeah. it's so many people. And oftentimes we say that to ourselves, you know, but um, I'm just so glad that you actually did something that was a bold step and that you may have thought was, you know, irrelevant or they may have thought you were irrelevant at the time, but look at where it's got you now. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I love out. it. I'm really glad. Yes. And, and Notes on a Train is such a fitting title for your book and the experiences that you had. I can't wait to learn more about it as we're going through. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's go ahead and move on our final author. Let's hear about your book, Miss Tori. So my book is Authentic Transparency, Forgiveness to Freedom. And I started that book back in 2015, a year after my mother passed when I was pregnant with my daughter. And my grandmother was like, you need to write a book. And I was like, oh, write a book. Um, so the book is, 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 is what it's called, Authentic Transparency. It is me being 100% transparency about me and my walk in life to where I'm at right now. Um, I talk about, like I said earlier, being a voice. I talk about everything, you name it. We talk about molestation. We talk about growing up in depression. We talk about growing up when we are seeking things in life, i.e. men, things, people. And I talk about, in the book, I talk about the foundation of life. I talk about 
child's fear. So everything in that book is literally my walk to where I'm at right now to be forgiven, but to be free from the hurt, the pain, the trauma, the, the, the issues that I've carried, you know, as an adult, we don't realize that sometimes we're still little kids mm. um, on the inside. And I talk about how I had to break that, how I had to let that go and the process to do it, how I got to that point. And in order for me to get to that point, I had to be 100% honest. I had to be 100%. This is, this is what it is. I, I call a spade a spade. You know, I'm, I don't leave, I leave no rock unturned because in order for you to know how to get from step A to step B to step C, you got to understand and know the person wholeheartedly. And you have to be able to be that free to speak those things. And that was one of the things that I really wanted to do. I feel like if I'm walking around here saying I am Shatoria, then I need to be able to be that as I'm writing this book. I need to be very authentic. I need to be very open. Um, the, the, the comments that I've received about the book, that the book is very detailed. And I do that because I, as you read the book, my goal and desire is for you to be in this position and say, whoa, wow, I can, I can see that. But my goal is also to be the voice that nobody wants to talk about. I want to talk about the things that we don't want to deal with. I want to talk about the hurt and the pain of the, the little people who feel like they still don't have a voice to speak on, who are now adults, who are parents, who are out here in the world. So my, my biggest uh, concept of the book was to just be free, be free to be open, be free to be transparent and to be honest um, and to help people also get free and also forgive others that is around them. Um, I start writing the book in 2015 after my mom's death and I kind of left it alone a little bit. And then um, when my grandmother passed in 2017, I really left it alone and it took COVID <laughs> and my mentor to be like, you have until uh, to April, I mean, to June to get this book to your publisher. And I was like, what? And I literally sat, um, I sat and I wrote 19 chapters in five months. I rewrote the whole entire thing in five months. And just like Ms. Lorraine was saying, it was literally, I had that thought, you know, why me? And God had to tell me, why not you? You have a voice. And giving it to my publisher, I, I, I cried tears because I was like, wow, I really have a book. And um, I got the book published in March, but we didn't release the book until May 1st. And so to see this book actually go into go into homes and people give me feedback and not just women, but men, it's like, this is dope, this is real. Like I needed to read this um, to see people getting it for their daughters. For me, it's telling me that, okay, I'm doing my calling. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And writing this book, being very honest, I won't even lie. I thought people was gonna look at me a certain way. And for people to look at me and go, you're the voice. You're the voice that's speaking this. That hands down, it gives me chills because I have a daughter. Um, I have a grown son and for them to not live the life that I did is my ultimate goal. But for me to be honest, so they don't live this life that I lived is one of my, my biggest accomplishments. So that's authentic transparency. I love it. I love it. You got so many hearts coming at you, Miss Tori. Um, Angel says, hi, Tori. Uh, Jocelyn said, it's a good read. Uh, she also says she's very transparent in her book, and we love you the same. Um, there was so much, uh, so many nuggets and things that you said during that and how it freed you and how you're also helping others and giving them the permission to um, be free. That is, you know, so important. And I'm proud of you as well for doing that because, you know, anything that we cover up, you know, it's just, it gives, I would say, the enemy um, room to continue to fight and fight. And, you know, and when you expose, you know, expose the enemy and expose the lies and even expose your weaknesses and vulnerabilities, I think that light, you know, is what brings about um, healing. God, you know, works through that, yeah. you being open and you being trans transparent. And so I'm so grateful just for all of you and the work that you're doing and how you're setting out to um, help others, because that's what, that's what this is all for, right? So 
Isn't it funny? Did y'all see a common theme though? Is so many people that have written their books during COVID or published or released during COVID. What do y'all think about that? Anybody? I think it's awesome. I think COVID, a lot of people see COVID in a negative light and I did not, I saw the title of the, the, the total opposite, even though, you know, my prayers always with the families who lost and all those things. Mm -hmm. But I saw that as a time where God was slowing us down because I'm a really busy person. Mm -hmm. And I saw it as God allowing a lot of us to use our talents that we wouldn't have done if it wasn't for COVID. If it wasn't for COVID, we wouldn't have slowed down and realized, mm -hmm. oh, I, I can do this. I got time because I can't lie now and say I ain't got no time. I got time now. I can, I'm home working. <laughs> so I, I saw it as a good thing. That's so true. And uh, Jocelyn, I know you want to step in. Jocelyn says, "What well, I like this. So we got to say this. She says, whatever God reveals, he wants to heal. Mm. Oh, I love it. Thank mm. you, Jocelyn. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Kashima. I saw oh, you get ready to step in. Second, everything you said, Shatorio, you said Tori, how you like to be called. I love, <laughs> I can't second that more because I literally was, traveling so much that I don't unpack my bags like that's kind of mm -hmm. how so I feel like wow would I have even written this book I wonder because mm -hmm. I had the notes but what I've sat down to actually write I'm not sure so definitely I take this time as it, I took the time as a slow down really settle in and you know really be with yourself so yeah. I just want to say I second that so much <laughs> And I'm going to have to third that because it's, it's very true. <laughs> um, I didn't, my, my life didn't slow down too much with COVID because I, I'm a, a housewife. I'm in the house all the time. But because um, it gave me time for pause because it was a very serious time and there was serious uh, repercussions that families were feeling. And mm. it gave me time to think about, well, what if, you know, COVID comes knocking at the door and you're going out and you say to yourself, what did I do mm. in my life that I could look back and say, well, at least I did that. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, um, at least I can say that I have something that I have achieved that I can put my hands on. And, and long after I'm dead and pushing up daisies somewhere, they'll say, oh, did you hear this book that I found in a thrift store? <laughs> this, <laughs> this woman back way sometime in the, in the early 20th century, she wrote this book and it really is speaking to me. So yeah, COVID got, gave me the push to get myself forward and get up off my, my laurels and go out here and do something. And oh. guess what? And after we're long and gone, it's still the, the words are gonna still have the same power, you know, even for your grandchildren, your children, you know? I do wanna add something to what Ms. Lorraine said. And one thing God had to remind me of was there's a lot of people that are already gone from this earth and when I think about that there's a lot of dreams and goals that went with them and one of my prayers to God mm. is I don't want to leave this earth filled I want to be yeah. completely empty and have mm. set what I needed to be done so when I leave this earth I've accomplished everything mm. and so I've learned to trust his words if he said do it I'm like all right I'm gonna do it no matter the walk to get to it because I don't want to be that person awesome I love it Miss uh, Lorraine you need to know that David said hello you also need to know that Darlene says, it's so nice to see you smile, Lorraine. And she says, I'm so proud of you. Linda says, great smile, author Lorraine DeCourt. And um, Jocelyn's talking about, I believe, your book, Tori. It's a good read. Um, yes, I did mention that. Um, so everybody's happy to see you smile. <laughs> and it is a great smile. So fantastic. Um, Thank you, ladies, for giving that, um, you know, sharing those words about COVID and what it's done for you and things like that. And you won't believe there's been so many authors, you know, that I've spoken to and also has been on this platform that COVID was the time that they've written their books or released or published them. So great things came out of it. And yes, we do send love and prayers to those that has had many hardships and um, loss during that time. Um, so as we continue this conversation, you know, how does, as, as your life has began to be different as now people are looking to you through maybe read your story and know more about you um, and the parts that they didn't know before, 
I know, Tori, you said that you thought people would look at you differently. Do you all feel like you deal with the public differently now that you have become a public figure? I see you shaking your head. You want to speak on that, Tori? How are you different? So I'm different because people see me differently, but in a positive way. So when I get the reviews, it makes me blush. It makes me go, wow, I did that. Um, because of I, I, a friend of mine was like, I went back to school because everything you doing, I seemed like I was lazy. So I'm going back and I'm going to graduate in August. And that makes me feel good because I'm, I'm out here putting positive stuff into the world. I'm already doing things in the community, but a book for me was a whole nother transparency because I'm putting everything about me out there. So when somebody tells me, you know, hey, that chapter right there touched me because of A, B, C, and D, or I talk about in the book how I lost my mother. So how that transpired for me, that's for somebody else. And what I, I've, I've taken from what people have said and what I've learned from God is everything we go through in life is not for us. So I had to learn that everything that I walked through and what I put in the book, I went through it, but it wasn't for me. It was for somebody else. So they can get on the other side of it. So when I hear their stories, I'd be like, oh, yeah, we got something in common. We can talk about it. So it makes me feel good, and it, but, and it still humbles me. Um, I'm not prideful of it because I could have easily been on a whole nother side and a whole nother realm. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to just to embrace that individual where they're at and honestly just to love them a lot more. Wow. That's huge. Anybody else? Do you deal with people differently now? Well, I don't deal with people differently because I, I haven't gotten too much fame yet. My book has only been out a couple of weeks, but I would hope to think that if I became uh, more noticed because of it, I've stepped into the light and not in the shadows where I usually live, that um, people would see that if they too could be there. They could, they could also do it. It's not necessary to hang back all the time. And sometimes it's all right to put yourself forward. Um, so that, that's what I would be hoping that I would approach it with humility if, if anything like that happened to me and, mm -hmm. and graciousness to be able to recognize and accept compliments when they come my way. I still have problems with that. And my, my uh, people are mentioned about my smile because I don't, I don't give it too often, but um, people say that uh, I should more, more often smile. So I hope that if my book takes off that I become more able to smile and accept it. Yes, definitely. And you have such a beautiful smile. So I'm just enjoying every time I see it showing, you know, as we're going through, I'm just watching because I was like, they said that for a reason and they know you. So they must know you don't smile often, but you keep smiling, Miss Lori. And I hope great things for you. Um, I hope that, you know, your book does open up many doors for you and new relationships. And yes, you can continue to be encouraging to other people. Um, there was something you said, and I don't, I, I have to come back to it because I don't remember, but I wanted to ask you about it. Um, it'll come back to me. I do want to share as the viewers are um, tuning in things that they are saying, because they are very much a part of this conversation and I'm loving it. Linda says some of the best writings in history have been during a pandemic. Shakespeare, for example, during a plague, Isaac Newton too. I don't know Shakespeare wrote during um, a plague and I've never even thought about that, but thank you, um, Ms. Curitan. I would really appreciate that. Um, a lot of things, this is Jocelyn. She says, a lot of things are birthed out of unexpected things. The pandemic was unexpected, but look what was birthed. Yes, Jocelyn also says, congratulations, ladies. And Linda, yes, you all are public fe uh, feature, uh, excuse me, not features, figures. <laughs> And uh, Linda says, gracious humility is my sister. Yes, Lorraine, your smile makes you look so bright. Um, awesome. So you are hearing good feedback from these ladies, getting a lot of support. Um, how do you, so we, is there someone else that wanted to say how they deal with people differently? If so, did you want to say something? Go ahead. It's really fast. Well, dancers are usually looked at kind of like, you know, like, oh, y'all don't know what you're doing or like kind of immature or kind of, um, <laughs> You know, like when you're going to get a real job type of thing, you know, and I've made all my money mostly from dance. So being an author now, a lot of my circle, the people that follow me or my friends or my acquaintances, they're like, oh, you're like an adult now. 
And I'm like, I've been an adult for a long time. <laughs> but I don't know. There's like a different side of me that they always see me as the drop it like it's hot girl or whatever they think because I'm a dancer, like I don't have a real job or something. So I feel like now I'm noticing like people taking me more seriously. Okay. So what people, oh, go ahead. No, go I'm ahead. Saying, I feel like I've always been the same person though, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why do people always think we playing because we got art in our I background? Don't know what that's about, especially when I paid all my bills on time with this job. So. This is real life. Like even writers, you know, freelance writers, you know, you would not believe how much money people can make um, blogging and things like that. So take us seriously, y'all. Yes, thank you. <laughs> love it um so think in, in addition to you as a writer and all of the things that you've done um working and this is for all of you so you dancing um touring with the circus um tori um your your line of work as well as miss Lorraine. how do you now you know incorporating this writing how do you balance your time like how do you make sure that you're still go or are you going to continue writing how does that fit I'll start. I make mine a part of my slow down day because they're literally now things are back in where I have rehearsal, then I have a class and then I have a this and then I have a that and because I teach dance as well. So now I make it a part of my day to reflect on the day and to just have a keep that moment that I had during the whole pandemic of the quarantine, keep that reflect on myself. So I'm trying to make that a part of my every day in addition to all my crazy, crazy. Um, I don't have a lot to keep me busy during the day, but I do think that with anything in your life, you, if it's important, you'll make it important and you'll find a way to do it as long as you give it in, importance. If you say to yourself, oh, this is just a little something I'm doing on the side, you know, you know, if I don't have anything to do, then if you treat it half, halfway, <laughs> to catch myself, if you treat it halfway, <laughs> then you'll approach it halfway and your results may end up being halfway. So if you give it importance and it becomes important and you will deal with it important. So that's how I'm gonna approach, approach uh, my writing and in the future and going forward. Okay, so, and most of your writing was done on a train. Do you have a specific location now that you're gonna, you know, do your writing? How's that gonna work? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no train in my life, but so now it'll be notes on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so long as you keep going, though. How about you, Miss Tori? Um, you know what? So with my full-time job and being home, so I'm a I'm a event planner also on top of being in the service and just like uh she was saying, I I agree with Lorraine. I mean, you give it 100 percent and that was the one thing. So I'm, I'm big about time management. So my time management, I kid you not, is this wonderful, wonderful book. I literally write everything down. If it's not in here, it just would not get done. I literally write everything down that I'm doing because again, I'm a full-time mom, full-time military member. And again, I write, um, I'm in the process of writing a workbook to go with this book um, to help people navigate for themselves. On top of I'm a life coach, I'm doing that. And then I have merchandise. So I am really big about time management. I'm really big about my time. And I spend time with my family. That doesn't, and I'm also getting my master's degree, by the way. So I, yes, ma'am, I am. I have a, a lot that I'm going on, but one of the things that I'm blessed, I have a supportive husband and I got supportive kids. So they, they understand. And since we are at home, you know, I, I found that support to be very big to where a simple date time, it'd be me and my husband eating Jersey Mike, watching one of our favorite shows. That is our quality time. And then we go back into our corners because he was in school, I'm in school and I'm working and we bounce in the whole six year old, you know? And we got a son that's in the military. He's not home anymore, but we're bouncing these things. And so because he knows what my heart is with the book, what I'm doing, he supports me 100%. He checks in on me. You good with your writing? What, what you doing next? Um, even the life coach, I, I, I take time to make sure that when I'm talking to a client, they have my 100% attention. And I've also learned, you know, how to cut it off and to have that. We're not doing nothing like Sundays is a, I'm not doing nothing. It is not, you know, so, and, and Wednesdays, because we're at home, Wednesdays is baby girl's date day with her mom. We go out to eat on Wednesdays for lunch. 
and I come back home and go back to work. And you know what? That that two hour time with her mom, she was she's good. So I, I agree with Ms. Lorraine. When it's important, you make the time. You do it right. And I'm like I'm like both of the ladies. I, we ain't half nothing. We we gonna we call to do it. We're gonna do it fully. And so that's what I that's what I enjoy. And I think that's why for me I don't get burnt out because I, 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 I've come to learn this is my calling and he's not gonna give me more than what I can bear as I'm doing it. So I take it and I, I'm like, all right, God, let's go. And you know, we go in it, so. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Did you get a chance to answer that, Kashima? Yes, yes. Okay, I yeah, okay. Yeah. Add it to my I, yes. Awesome. Okay. So as you guys were talking, this question I wanted to present you with. Um, so many people get to see, you know, they're watching you or they're hearing you now talk about, you know, your writing and your book and then even your lives. Um, but what they don't know, when you see that finished process, I mean, finished product, they don't know a lot about the process. Can you talk about like, what, what was your process with like your editor, your publisher? Because there's so many people that have a hand in the book. It's not just you as the writer. So what is that like, or what was that like for you? For myself, um, the publisher, like I said, she um, has her own publishing company called The Traveling Black Woman. So she really specializes in, in that, Black women going to certain places. And it really was just a lot of back and forth via email for nine months. We started in March and published December. And it was a lot. I mean, I would say it was probably more six months of just on the, and then it was like, okay, here's the book. All right, mail it back. Okay, here's the book. All right, mail it back. So it was a little slightly tedious and I don't want to say annoying, but it wasn't the fun part, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but luckily that was it you know then we had zoom meetings like this and we talk about it let's go through page by page you know so that was my process i mean it was what i expected but obviously that part is not fun the editing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people don't ever really think about that you know because even as a publishing house i know that oftentimes when people want to say like well what goes into writing a book they don't know the long hours of going through line by line and reading and then saying okay you know restructuring, reframing, things like that, you know, and sometimes you can, you know, there's really real conflict that yeah. can occur. Has anybody had that? Um, not that you, you don't have to reveal everything, but was it just all smooth sailing or were there any kind of kinks? <laughs> I'm doing that because the tone of the book, I'm a very, you guys can probably notice, I'm just a little extra. Everybody calls, I'm a little extra. So it was kind of, a little toned down and I understand why, but it was, for me, it wasn't a conflict, but it was just anyone who knows me. And there was a few people that said, I know you, this something about it wasn't all you. And I said, wow, you can tell? They're like, yes, because you're just too extra. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Cause I mean, people are, are getting the book, especially those that are travelers. So I'm not mad, but that could be a little bit of a conflict when someone changes the voice or they change the tone of, how you meant to write it and then now they took you down a little bit but i guess that's expected okay thank you for sharing that oh, thank you my editing experience was a little different because mine is it's very short and it was poems and it i was very terrified when i sent it off to chandra chandra spark spark my editor and i told her that after i hit send i felt i was going to go in the room and puke <laughs> I was so nervous and so scared. And she had, and she got back to me within a couple of days. She said, I don't know why you were so scared because you did a really good job. And I was like, it just didn't feel that I did a good job. So our back and forth was uh, very positive. And she had, she has a way of talking in a, she doesn't say like, you need to do this or you need to do that. She'll say, well, we could try doing this a certain way and we could try doing that a certain way. And how were we feeling when we wrote this and what what did we have in mind? And that was a very calming and um, a receptive way to, to do the editing process. So I, I found it was very nice. And I leaned heavily on my sister, Lisa, who's an author also, um, for her at guidance and, um, you know, help me through that. And she, she got to the point where she was, I know she was tired of saying, Lorene, Google it, Lorene, Google it. Cause I had so many questions and I was so nervous and, and, and uh, didn't feel comfortable with the process. But after going through it with her holding my hand and Chandra holding my hand, it was actually a very uh, 
rewarding process. And I think that um, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it to go through it because just because I say, I think it in my head that I should say it this way. And I, I'm like, I'm going to, this is the way it's going to be. I'm not changing the word. This is it. This is me. But sometimes you need to, you have, need to have me be a little bit less me. And that's the job that the editor comes in and helps you out. But if you get a good one, then I think it'll be very positive. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, from my end, um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm extra. However, my book couldn't be extra to a point. But my, I'm, I'm an extra individual. But the biggest thing for me that my editor, my editor was awesome. B and B reviews, love that family. They awesome. And one of the things she told me when she sent the book back, um, I'm like Miss Lorraine. I was like nervous when I sent it. And what she said was, "I need you to be more in detail." And I was like, "What? Like how much more detail do you want?" Mm -hmm. And so to go back in and detail things about your life. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not free from those things, it, it will be very hard to go back and have to add those details to it. So having to add details caused me a little bit of an anxiety, especially one particular chapter. So I had to put a whole disclaimer in it because she was like, they need to fill you. And I was like, in this chapter, are we sure? So to be very detailed, that was literally a, a gut punch. But I, I won't even lie. After I got over that hump, it was like smooth selling sending it over to my publisher once I was done, so. Anybody feel changed afterward? <laughs> yeah, great. that's great, I love it, I love it. Um, so now is the time in the show where I'm gonna ask you all, and you kind of started this, um, to give acknowledgements. Is there anyone out there that you wanna shout out, you know, that's been supportive on this journey with you? I would like to shout out my fiance who came into my life kind of, I would just say it happened out of nowhere. I thought I was going to be the gypsy girl. And so now that he just came, he was so supportive during the process. My grandma who literally dealt with all of my mess, she's 93, still kicking. And my parents and all my siblings that you're so sorry if you hear the noise in the back, there's a lot of us and they're always supportive and they're trying to support me in the background. I said, no, be quiet. So <laughs> basically they're just so supportive, but they're loud. I love them, but I just thank my whole family pretty much. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, I would like to acknowledge my husband, uh, who's actually sitting here with me right now, who's been very supportive of me through this process. And um, I'd like to acknowledge my sister, Linda and Lisa, and my brother, David, and also my therapist, Kim. So she's been really holding my hand throughout this whole process and telling me, you can do it, you can do it. And my friend, Janet, who helped me prepare and uh, helped me not be so nervous and helped me feel like I could do it. And I want a special thanks to my daughters, Jennifer, Jacqueline, Joanne, and Jillian, who their support has got me through a lot of rough, point, rough points in my life. And um, yeah, that I think everybody else that I haven't not haven't mentioned by name, I still am very appreciative for your role in my life and to get me where I am today. Linda says bacon. Who's bacon? That's my husband. <laughs> That's his <laughs> nickname that she gave okay. him. I was like, she said, well, don't forget bacon. <laughs> um, and author Lisa says, um, I think it says Martin Rocks. Is that, is that, am I saying Martine, that right? Martine, that's his name is Martine. Oh, Martine. Okay, Martine. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So they agree with you. He's awesome. <laughs> How about you? Um, my knowledge is definitely go out to God first and then my household, my husband, my kids, and then my, my godparents, my in-loves, as I call them, um, and then definitely to my crew, like to the, to the group of people who have completely supported me it's too many to name, but they know who they are. You know, they, I love every bit of them because they allowed me to be me. And so I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. And honestly, um, to everyone, honestly, who helped me throughout the book. And what I mean by that is the good and the bad, you know, we have those good people, we have those bad people. So I'm appreciative of all of them because without those incidences and those issues, I, I wouldn't be able to write. And um, the last two, the last three individuals, honestly, um, my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, who you know, my grandparents raised me. Um, my mom, uh, she did for a short period of time, but I thank those three because they pushed me 
like no like no end you know they they love me and they push me regardless of the the ugliness and the goodness so i i'm definitely appreciative of all of the individuals for that awesome awesome and before we go can you all tell everybody where they can purchase your books and then also how to follow you stay connected with you I'm um my book is for purchase on Amazon under literally my name Kashima Pendu Malik. I know it's a lot to say there. Um, at Pendu Dance is my Instagram. My book is really specifically can be found on at World of Pendu Travel because I'm also a travel agent. I didn't talk about that. Um, but at Pendu Dance is my main Instagram and at World of Pendu Travel. Uh, fabulous. And also in addition to you all sharing it, if you'll put it in the chat as well. So that that's a reference for them. Where can we follow you and connect with you, Miss Lorraine? I, I'm very easy to follow. All of my social media is my name. So my social media at Twitter is at Lorraine, Doc, Lorraine Decord. At uh, Facebook is author Lorraine Decord. And uh, Instagram, it's at Lorraine Decord. My book is available on Amazon. It's for Kindle and for paperback. And if you do a search on either the title, Notes on the Train, or on my name, Lorene Decourt, it'll come up. I also have a YouTube channel, which is primarily my other passion, which is greeting cards. I make greeting cards. So if you are interested in finding about how to make greeting cards, you can also check out my YouTube channel at Lorene Decourt. And I also have my main um, author uh, website at www.lorenedecourt.com. I love that. And your YouTube channel, can you say that again? Lorene Decourt. Okay. I'm going to have to check out your um, YouTube channel. When I was a little girl, that was one of the things when I wrote on the list, all the things I wanted to do. I didn't know I was going to be a writer, but I love writing greeting cards. So I want to watch your video on how to um, do okay. that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Miss Tori, where are we following you? How are we connecting? You can follow me on Facebook at I am Shatoria and you can catch me on IG at I am underscore Shatoria. And then there's my website at I am Um, You can catch my podcast. Um, we are about to start up a new season. You can catch me on popping Amazon, Apple with I am Shatoria. My book, you can find me on Amazon, Kindle, you can use my name, Shatoria Christian, but you can also look at the book, Authentic Transparency, um, Forgiveness to Freedom. And you can check us out for our Monday motivations. We do Monday motivations every Monday, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, <laughs> to, to, to make sure we get you out there. So everywhere, everywhere doing everything. I love it. I love your energy. <laughs> I love all of your um, passion, you know, and your devotion to you know, um, pursuing your dreams. I really uh, counted a privilege as all of you being here with me tonight on celebrating Black literacy, our narratives matter. And I hope that you all will stay connected. Um, I'd love to follow you and see what you all are doing, um, changing this world, you know, making it a better place for everybody. I just hope great things for each of you. Please make sure in the actual Facebook chat as well that you list um, your tags and then um, any links that you want to provide the audience. Uh, let's see if we have any comments coming from our group. Yes, um, yes, it takes a village, Lisa says. Beautiful card. She makes beautiful cards coming from Lisa. She also makes bookmarks. Um, this says, oh, someone put in your link already. Jocelyn already got you, Shatoria. <laughs> so yes, get our bookmarks custom. Hey, Avocado, Lisa Knox. So these must be people that have nicknames. Avocado, you know who Avocado is? <laughs> that must be somebody's nickname on the chat. Um, shout out to all Black authors. We rock. Yes, we do. And we will continue to leave our stamp and let the world know that we are here and we're not going anywhere. <laughs> So get our book, you know, follow these young ladies, support them, um, get behind them in everything that they do. Um, I'm looking and I keep thinking for about with you, um, Kashima. Have you ever thought about a doll, like a dancing doll or anything? Oh, that's um, a good idea. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I, I could see it for you. It's just I couldn't leave without saying it because it, it keeps coming to me. Yes, I would I love to see that. that doll. And when she I do, I, I over some percentage now. <laughs> when you do, I need it for my daughter. Okay, let me know. She's she's a dancer, so oh, okay. Yes, I yes. Actually, she's her dance teacher, so she can do anything. I hope she knows that. Yes, Jocelyn is actually her dance teacher. That's why she knows so much about dancing. So oh, I need. Yeah, that's my answer in there. Okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. Oh, wow. Great session. And thank you for your um, encouragement as well, Linda. I think somewhere back, she said, great interview, Manisha. I appreciate that. We all love um, encouragement. And then Mary Lewis says, this has been a wonderful session. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep on shining, ladies, giving your all. Um, it's been my honor and pleasure and wish you the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a fabulous Bye. evening. Bye. Wow. It's amazing. I always enjoy um, this. You know, people might think that, you know, well, you're just talking, you know, you're just asking questions and things like that, but you don't know. I love people. I love inspiring stories. I love seeing how people are changing the world. You know, we really are like just one at a time. People say, you know, that there's, you know, so, so many people are into me. This is the day of the selfie. This is the day that it's all about me, but I don't believe that. I think that people still care. I think that people are still out there motivating others. People are still connecting. People People are still making a difference and evidence of that is every week you see it on celebrating black literacy we're seeing it on authors chat and make sure you tune in for the next authors chats um, episode which will be june 17th at 7 p.m we see it with kids talk tuesdays on the fight on the fourth tuesday of the month um, we're watching people on their lives we're looking on youtube we're seeing how people still care people are still concerned about the village People are still concerned about our people as a community and as, you know, family, we're still giving love, we're still shining. So if there's anything that you were able to take away from tonight's show, I hope that you'll leave it in the chat that these authors will be inspired and continue to do this work. Just even if it's one word, whatever that is, what did you take away from tonight's show? Let us know. And I do hope that, as I said earlier, that you will follow these authors, that you will purchase their books. If you are brand new watching the show for tonight, we hope that you will come back. We hope that you will um, share and tell somebody else about it, that we'll continue to grow, um, send authors our way, writers that would like to be authors. We can help them at King's Press Publishing. As I mentioned at the opening of the show, we are a publishing house for the unsung heroes, the um, invisible and those that you know don't get to tell their stories. We believe in the powerful story. We believe in real people being authentic. So we want to work with you. If you need help, you need support, come see us or check us out at the kingspresspublishing.com. The website is www.kingspresspublishing.com. Excuse me. You have to add that. We are on Facebook and Instagram at The King's Press LLC. Um, you are watching my personal Facebook page, my Nisha King. Again, we love connecting with people, building and making a difference. So if that is you that would like to come on board, um, please get in touch with me. But more importantly than anything, uh, I hope that you'll support these authors that were on tonight and tell somebody else about them. Let them know how they've made a difference in your life. Let them know how you were inspired tonight. Um, I want to even read out as the messages are still coming in. Will this go on YouTube? It will. It will. Um, you can also download as soon as when I log off of Facebook and close out the show, um, you can go ahead and download the video, um, all of the authors that were on tonight. Um, you may be able to if you watch, I'm not quite sure. Um, however, I see that the links are coming in. And then I like one of the things that author Lisa Dodson said, dedication to your crab, to that inner voice inside of you. Kudos to each of you for listening to that voice and for, let me hit the more, for following your dream. So beautifully said, thank you, Lisa, listening to their muse. 
awesome. So keep on listening to your voice. Keep on being a voice, you know, for others. Those that may not have the courage right now um, to speak up for themselves, that may not have the courage to be light, you know, they may be hiding, but just need that extra support and that extra love to let them know that they can do it because they're watching you. People are watching you. So thank you for watching tonight and doing what it is that you do so greatly. We love all of our authors. We thank you. See you next week, next Wednesday for celebrating Black literacy. Have a fantastic evening.